Hey guys, welcome back to our review series in support of the Lazy Eye Modelers group build ideas. We've already done, of course, the review for the 57 Ford Del Rio Hidden Valley Ranch Wagon, which ended up having some hidden valleys and <laughs> uh, mold lines in the chrome that uh, really were a bummer. And today, or tonight, or whenever you have to be watching this, we're going to be reviewing this, the 1930 Ford Model A Hot Rod. This is, of course, the new modified reissue of the 29 Ford Roadster uh, Hot Rod that came out last year, fresh off the presses, literally just came out, oh, I don't know, uh, perhaps a week ago at this point. Um, available probably now everywhere. I believe Tower is now shipping it, which means that all your local hobby shops will have it. And uh, I paid $10.00. So you know what the base price of this is. Uh, I think I think uh, Tower Hobbies is selling it for twenty one ninety five or thereabouts, or maybe it's twenty ninety five. So if you're getting uh, ripped off, you know I, I support my local hobby shops as much as I can. Obviously, I did here, uh, but you know within reason. So we'll uh, spin her on around. We'll take the shrink wrap off this, and we'll get to. Uh, get to reviewing this one this is something I'm not a really big hot rod guy I have a 32 Ford and I have the 29 Ford Roadster not a big hot rod guy don't really care for cars of that era per se but uh and I've never actually even opened the 29 Ford I'm looking at it it's still in the truck wrap too but these are kits I'm interested in just because of uh I don't know they just trip my trigger the, the right way uh especially what we talked about in the acquisition side that uh blown version of the, of the uh, low boy right there uh I don't know if that's what I'm going to do, but at any rate, uh, spin the camera around and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So as we've been doing with these, we're starting off with the decal sheet. This is, uh, the quite a bit of decals on here actually uh you have a whole bunch of uh military oops got the wrong end of the pointer a bunch of military-esque themed uh things uh for uh sort of olive drab uh you know fighter jet style uh build that they show on the box art all the uh excess rivet lines that go along with that uh, up here, we have some more, some more, uh, some more, well, there's some more decals, but more traditional style flames and, uh, hot rod, uh, and hot rod style decals, uh, for lack of a better term, you have your, uh, decals for your whites, for your white walls, some skulls, some devils, V8 logos, all sorts of cool stuff, uh, in the terms of, uh, just some good looking hot rod decals don't necessarily know that any of these will really make my build per se because i'm kind of a you know glossy paint kind of guy but i definitely could see saving these for the old uh, decal parts box for later use down the road you've got uh three sort of generic license plates up here a couple of uh you know personalized sort of vanity plates that aren't really license plate license plates a couple of shift patterns of a couple of uh v8 logos and uh two different style uh gauge clusters which i'm not sure if we can get this up here in a way that's going to show be great if you would focus por favor sometimes you speak spanish to the camera it, it likes it better okay they're gonna be upside down <laughs> i just need to be able to get it closer they're upside down, but you see you have two different sort of gauge cluster uh, things, sort of a, a traditional black and white and sort of a uh, maybe a uh, beige-ish background. Maybe that's supposed to be an off-white, like a, uh, by the way, uh, some Chrysler uh, gauge packages are. Uh, but all, all this stuff uh, pretty cool. We got some uh, 283 cubic inch caution contents under pressure uh, decals over here. Those are kind of cool. Obviously, you got a small block Chevy in this kit, if you're not aware, going in. Um, and we have our decal uh, pamphlet here. This is more of a booklet. It's actually stapled in the middle, as you can see. Uh, this is going to be your standard Revell instruction manual. We go through, you know, do this all the time. Your, your, your 
color chart is up here telling you what color to paint things. And you have a, oops, I didn't mean to actually knock the camera backwards, but you have quite a robust parts list here that goes for uh, two pages the way the uh, 57 Fords did. Because there are multiple building options to this kit, and I mean multiple building options. This uh, will start off warning you up here, which is off camera, so we're going to have to sort of take the camera and move it. <laughs> High boy is A, channeled low boy is B. So please make sure you're following the correct instructions for the build that you're trying to go for here. And, you know, on this you know, front page here, we've got the... Uh, block assembly, which is way up here at the top. You're sort of peeking into the top of the frame. Uh, you're building along, building along, and then you have your, go into your choices here. You've got a set of uh, three two-barrels or a uh, supercharged blown uh, engine here. Both of them have a front cover that includes an actual uh, alternator bracket. Holy mother of God, uh, finally, something with an alternator bracket in it. That's, you know, floating alternators, the bane of all models everywhere. And then, uh, you know, showing you your, uh, there's just so much going on here, guys. Yeah. Showing you your uh, construction here. This will just be your regular sort of alternator bracket. And then this, of course, the blown has an alternator bracket and the supercharger itself. We talked about this during uh, the acquisition video. We talked about this in the regular stash project video. This is one of the very few streetable in the sense that it has a water pump and an alternator, streetable blown uh, engines out there uh, for you. I don't know why the blower scoop is missing after you've already installed it, but you know, parts omitted for detail as the old saying goes. Now, this, the rest of this page is for the high boy construction. As you see, there's A's here. So floor pan, uh, you're installing your exhaust pipes, you're installing uh, what I believe would be your rear axle carrier, uh, your steering shaft, your engine, the floor panel itself, which has a very nice uh, racing style gas tank and a battery back here. Um, you have your exhaust pipes coming off of your stock motor and or you can go with your, of course, uh, big header pipes if you want to go that way with the blown uh, engine over here. It's the same thing, except this is the channeled chassis, which is a different frame, as you can obviously see just between the two pictures. Um, and it's pretty much the same instruction uh, manual, although you, of course, have to, to uh, take the exhaust underneath the uh, part of the frame here in order to get the fit. And we are still building uh, your high boy chassis which we're, we're just sort of skip over because it's the same thing this will now introduce you to the b style uh interior now there are a uh the ability i should say to build this interior both on the low boy and the uh channeled frame so you need to pay attention to your bomber pieces as far as which ones you have uh, there are bomber seats and your rear panel here. Coming down here is a two-part uh, axle, one-piece axle with a uh, separated front pinion. Uh, your choice of your two different uh, drive shafts, depending on which frame you're using. Again, instructions and parts numbers here, guys, is going to be your big friend. I know there's a lot of people out there that are act all you know big and badass about not needing to use instructions because real men don't use instructions yeah well go ahead try to build this without using the instructions i guarantee you're going to glue something to something that doesn't belong to be there uh nice fin break here we'll go over that in a second your two different wheel choices the uh sort of uh kidney style uh they're not hollow brands really but they're sort of of that vein and then you have a steel wheel with a chrome uh trim ring and a hubcap front axle assembly uh, going into the uh, rear axle assembly, you got exhaust tips and your actual uh, rear axle uh, springs there. A lot of people complaining that they would rather have this be a more traditional spring setup. Eh, whatever. Uh, front radius arms and your sh front shocks and adding your rear, your, uh, rear drums here. Um, again, here, make sure you're using the right parts for the right version of your build. Up here, we go into the the uh, radiator shell. You've got the 32 Ford style radiator shell here. This is in three pieces. And you have a 1930 uh, stock style radiator here. Uh, you see here, oh my God, there's actually plumbing to the supercharged engine, no less, let alone the actual uh, 
regular, if you will, um, just street engine, the, the uh, regular 350 without the blower. But again, it's a streetable blown engine. It has radiator hoses. And this over here is giving you your optional parts for your regular uh, engine as well as the other chassis option because the frame is going to make the uh, radiator shelf fit slightly differently. Over here, you're uh, putting in uh, your... Uh, gas pedal in your shifter over here you're starting to build your shell which again guys look all these uh you know there's there's different radiator or different firewalls depending whoops you can't even see that ha, talking to myself different firewalls depending on which one of the uh, versions you're building uh here's your gauge cluster going into your dashboard of course you're going to use whichever one of those uh gauge clusters fit yourself and you notice here hey look this looks like a two-piece body yeah we'll get into that in a second uh this Showing the side panels uh, for the tuck and roll interior rather than the bomber interior. So again, parts, 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 parts. Pay attention. Uh, your glass installs from the inside up here. Yes. <laughs> and glass installs from the inside. Here's your windshield frame, your rear view mirror. Uh, putting your... This is kind of an interesting construction uh, here because your uh, completed body is going to go in here. And then you're going to stick the, the front seat in through the roof. The roof, the roof, the roof has a seat coming through it. And then you're going to install the steering wheel through the roof. <laughs> That's going to be fun. And then uh, here's your front wheels, or I should believe it would be your rear wheels uh, being assembled. Uh, this is showing the uh, knockoffs for the uh, optional wheels. Your rear end treatment, your front end treatment. You have two different style headlights. Uh, there is a roof panel that is separate. You do not have to install it. It's telling you not to glue it. That way you can take it back off again if you wish. And then we have multiple uh, decal uh, formats here. You've got sort of an army style thing with a star. You've got sort of an air force thing here with a you know the pinup girl on a bomb and showing how many cars you've blown up and stuff like that. Uh, again, your 283 cubic inch uh, decal on your uh, blower, and then your more traditional uh, wide white hot rod style uh, wheels and uh, your decals as far as, uh, and, and just your regular, uh, what was it, regular, your hot rod style uh, decals here. You, know, you get your skull and crossbones on your grill or a V8 logo on your grill. Maybe, I don't know, if you guys can see the fact that there's something in the grill, you can clearly see the skull and crossbones. But anyway, so there's your all your decal options. There's a lot of stuff to look at here as far as the planning of this kit goes in that vein, because there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, this little bag here has your wheels and your metal uh, pins for your uh, attaching your, your uh, wheel backs to the kit itself. These are the same uh, wheels and tires, I believe, that were in the 29. I'd have to actually get the 29 out, out and look at it. But it's a thin... Uh, you know what? I haven't actually, since I have not opened my 29, I'm going to open these and take a look at them because this will be the first time I've really had a chance to look at these wheels as well. You have a... A thin front and a big old beefy back here. I believe the front tires, if I'm not mistaken, are the the tires that are in the. Uh, let me see here. My blue background's sliding off camera. Range. These are the same front tires that are. Or these tires, I should say, are the same ones that are in the. Um, oh crap! The name just while I was goofing around with my background, <laughs> the name just appeared off me. Um, up, 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 up. Oh, well, we'll come back to that in a second because uh, I'll, I'll, it'll pop into my mind. But it's a very, you know, it's a thin tire. It's got some tread to it. Not a lot to talk about there. Pie crust sides. And then you have the uh, bigger back tire. This, of course, again, has some, you know, this actually has a pretty nice tread to it. As far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, I like the way this looks. I don't know if it's necessarily period correct or accurate, but I like the way it looks. And so, you know, that is what it is. <laughs> if I'm if I'm using this tire uh, in the sense that I like it, I like the tire. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna outsource the tires. I don't think I, I like these tires as far as what they represent. And I could see the model kit in my mind, but I cannot think of it. It's an old 1950s Revell kit. It was done in the in the select pro program thing, and then it was reissued as a regular kit, and I'll be darned if I can think of it. Um, I was a Black Beauty, but that's a horse. Um, ah, guys, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm going to have to pause the video at some point and, and actually go and look it up. 
here's your rear axle and your uh, rear end housing assembly. Some good de detail here. And I would like to point out from the, from the very first parts runner here. Now, a lot of these parts are going to be shared with the 29 in the sense that I'm going to be looking at a lot of stuff going, um, uh, um, uh, and trying to figure out what it is. And it's going to be parts that aren't going to be used the way the 57 video was. But notice that there are kickouts here, here, and here, and then two kickouts on each side of the actual exhaust, which means there are no ejector pin marks on the actual rear end itself anywhere. Because this would be the, you know, the business end, so to speak. This side should have all the ejector pins on it. What we have talked about before is that the 1929 uh, Ford project that has spawned this 1930 and i'm sure will spawn at least two or three more kit variations through its lifetime you notice that the parts runner here is curved the way that tamiya and aoshima uh do a lot of their parts runners so the things don't have seams in it these were a pet project of some people including roger harney who's no longer with us at Ravel, and you can tell from the first thing you pick up the attention to detail that went into creating the engineering around this parts runner so that the axle, while it has a seam that goes around it because that's just the nature of a two-part mold, it doesn't have any ejector pins on it. Here is, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to look at this because, again, I don't have, I have to, uh, have to keep the, the, the parts list out here, guys, because I don't have the, uh, <laughs> the uh, thing I, I didn't do the 29 i haven't looked at my 29 so i don't know there's a high boy and a low boy floor and i'm gonna make sure i have the right uh, parts this would be the i guess oh it's the floor for both all right well that's easy enough then here's the uh the floorboard uh would sort of be your interior floor panel as well nice big old dong won uh logo stamped right onto there it's tampo printer don't come off probably with some uh uh Oh, what am I trying to think of? Nail polish remover, because that tends to take off tampo printing. But if not, you're going to paint over it anyway. Uh, there are a couple of ejector pins uh, on this piece itself. You notice there's a little bit of flash around the outside edge here. That's kind of surprising to see on what is actually a brand new mold, right? But it's not interfering with anything. Uh, this up here, this part <laughs> up here that's up around the dashboard edge, that almost interferes with things. But there's your dashboard uh, as far as that goes. It's a very basic one. And then you have uh, your straight pipes that connect to part of your exhaust system there. Overall engraving on the uh, on this pan is good. Uh, remind, you know, keep in mind, guys, that this, of course, is a custom hot rod, so the floor stamping may not be prototypically correct for a 1980 uh, or 1930, rather, Ford. But again, notice all the kick points. There's just kick points galore on this. You still get some ejector pins on this uh, floor Anyway, uh, however, I believe that this is all this will be hidden by the seats and everything else like that, and all this back here you'll never see. Um, but again, just shows the amount of engineering that these guys put into it. Look at all the kick points on this. <laughs> this is like Tamiya level uh ejector pins to try to keep the ejector pins off of the back of things. Ironically, you've kept the ejector pins off the back of the these these uh you know break the finned uh, brake drums but there's four great big ones and there this one right here has actually quite a bit of flash sticking up off of it uh for the roof panel that goes in this is obviously the back side of it so here's your front side here's your break your uh drum brake retainers back here um i'm not really sure what that part is off the top of my head um this appears to be the uh the gas pedal and the brake pedal right here and then over here are your uh, finned brake drums. Very nice detail to them. Very nice engraving. Very, you know, nicely done. Uh, I'm guessing that all the kick pins can be taken out of there because obviously they're all connected together with all those uh, kick pins in the middle there. Uh, without doing too much damage to the actual brake fins, but some delicate sanding is going to take, have to take place there so you don't end up flattening, uh, you know, uh, the fins so far around and then down here in the bottom of course is your uh, steel wheels which again nicely done shows a wheel hub in two of them a nice lug detail uh, you know again I could take or leave this desire that Ravel has to paddle wheel all their wheels 
Uh, and then here's your racing fuel style fuel cell right here. If we could just get things to focus. There we go. And then, of course, this is the business end, the part you see of the roof uh, panel. So there's that. And that's all that is in that little bag. Moving on to, let's see, what else we got here? Here's your clear tree. I'm not going to take it out. Um, you can see your uh, rear window, your front window, uh, your, uh, your, your third windows, for lack of a better, your quarter windows. And then you have uh, two different style headlights as far as a smaller headlight and then larger headlights as well. And all right, let's open this bag here that has more goodies in it. And these are going to be the runners that have your frames in them. <laughs> your frames in them. There we go. <laughs> now you can see. Uh, let me see if they're labeled. Not really. All right, that's 77 and that's 70. So let me take a peek. I'm sure you guys are screaming, oh, I know which ones those are. Shut up, just keep talking. But I don't, and I'd like to know. <laughs> so uh, 70, which was this one, is your your uh, high boy, if you will, your traditional regular frame. And then this, of course, is now going to be your channeled 32 Ford frame. And this has, of course, your uh, rear axle carriers for both. Why is it? You keep sliding them towards me and you guys can't see them. There we go. These, have, of course, have your rear axle carriers here and then your uh, front uh, radius arm for your steering here. Obviously, the there are of different lengths. As long as you keep these chassis apart, or at least keep the these parts attached to the tree, I don't think I have a problem with losing any of them. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at the traditional frame up close. I'm okay with everything I'm seeing here. I have a couple, you know, basically have two ejector pins here, but that's going to disappear again. Look at all the kickouts. <laughs> Uh, I don't see any sink marks. I don't uh, in the frame sides. I don't see any uh, sink marks on the frame inside. So that's good. Looking at the channeled chassis or channeled frame, I guess I should say to be technically correct. Again, uh, there's a there's a slight mold line coming down the side front here. That's just the way you know it's it's the way the plane of the uh, thing runs. So it's going to have a little bit of a of a of a uh, mold line. Right down the side here, where it goes below the the uh, the, the uh, level of the plane, but yeah, that's what you expect as a two part mold. So there's nothing new about that. Again, there are no sink marks in the in the frame itself. There are no sink marks on the inside of the frame. So very good job, to Ravel. Kudos to not having things that are going to require eight and a half months of putty to fix. Uh, you've got two sets of exhaust pipes here, and they are, of course, going to be specific to one being the traditional frame, one being the channel frame. I'm going to guess the channel frame is this one because they're deeper. They are otherwise identical to one another in content. Again, eh, you know, make sure you have which part you want. You might want to just take all of the spare parts that you're not using and put them in another box or a piece of Tupperware or something to keep them, you know, straight so you don't end up, you know, not knowing which one of these you want to paint at the end. Uh, I'm still seeing there's there's not a big b amount of flash on the parts themselves, but there's flash on sort of the lead up to the runners. Again, it's just sort of weird for a new tool to have that kind of issue. Um other than the mold lines on the side of a round part that you would expect with round parts, there are no uh, additional flash or mold on them that is uh, out of the ordinary. Here is going to be a uh, your tuck and roll interior. Let's slide it this way so you can see it. These, of course, would be your traditional tuck and roll door cards. You've got a door latch and a door uh a roller for the window on here and this would of course be your seat over here we'll take the seat and we'll bring it up to your eye level so you can see what you're getting here nice engraving on the tuck and roll and then we'll do this here where you can see the side panels again nice engraving on the tuck and roll 
I'm going to assume that this is uh, the traditional uh, firewall here. And then you have uh, both of your electric fans. One will be for the 32 grill and one will be for the 30 grill. Please, if I'm pointing at the wrong ones, don't yell at me later. But I'm just telling you there are two separate electric fans. Uh, and this would be, the, I believe, the 32 Ford uh, shroud here. And then you have uh, your various... Uh, my daughter is doing something in her room that sounds like she's building something. Sorry, guys, it distracts me. Uh, these are your uh, heater hoses for uh, the traditional and the lower uh, frame, and then your uh, steering arm. And then this other runner that's in here is going to be the uh, bomber-style interior, which, again, has more... Uh, Radiator part or radiator hoses again for lower or higher because you can build this either way. You can build either one of these either way, either as the channeled or as the high boy. So there are they're trying to make it sort of as simple as they can in the sense of not mixing and matching parts. So here's an, another uh, electric fan here. I'm not sure if you use this one or not. There are more holes in it. So again, your parts are going to have to be, uh, you know, pay attention to it. Here's I believe probably going to be your uh, low boy uh, firewall only because it's smaller. Uh, your back of your bomber, uh, what they're calling a skeleton uh, interior. Here are your bomber seats themselves, which look pretty cool. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you can see them. There, there we go. Uh, again, they look pretty cool. They're pretty nice. Uh, there are ejector pins. Hey, look at that. The ejector pins on these seats are on the bottom where you'll never see them again look at all the kick pens <laughs> um this is the these right here will be let me flip them the other way so they'll be closer these will be your your uh, skeleton style interior basically what this is supposed to represent is is the uh door framing of the uh 30 ford without the uh actual panels hanging on it um, the one thing that we have that has been pointed out to me about these and i didn't know enough about them and Here's the, uh, let, me, let me phrase it to you this way. There's a problem here, and that is that other than the window crank and the door release itself, everything that's engraved in here is engraved in negative. Basically, everything that's sticking up should be sunken, and everything that's sunken should be sticking up. It was a goof up. Everybody realized it when this thing was a test shot, and Ravel did not fix it, because Ravel doesn't fix anything, because they're perfect, and uh, you can't tell them anything. Be that as it may, I wouldn't have known that unless somebody pointed it out to me. The problem I have with it is when it was pointed out that this is backwards, and this may really, really bother some people that it's backwards. Again, for me, I don't know. I can't tell if it would bother me or not. I would need to see reference photos of sort of the real thing, and then I'd be, you know, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, there's a certain smugness about the people that were showing this kit in advance that it was, well, we know it's wrong, but it. who cares? Who cares that it's wrong? It doesn't matter. Why do you? Why do you stupid people dare question Ravel? So again, I don't know how much it really bothers me. I, it bothers me that I know it's because I know it exists. But it, looking at it, I don't know if I know or not. You'd have to tell me. And that's one of those things where, with me and accuracy, the two, uh, you know, the two sort of meet in an odd place because, like. I don't know. If, if I didn't know, would I care? <laughs> and do I care just because I know, if you if you get what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know. It's up to you guys to decide. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and fault the kit itself as much as I am the attitudes of certain people uh, on various internet forums who, you know, are names, quote unquote, who, you know, just believe we should just shut up and take whatever Ravel shovels at us rather than uh, you know, expecting them to know something's wrong and fix it. Here are your uh, basic parts to your small block Chevy. This, of course, this uh, runner also has the two drive shafts for the two different chassis formats. You got your block heads. Uh, they, <laughs> your block heads. That's, that describes people at Revell, right? Um, pretty good engraving here. Yet, And this seems to me to be yet another small block Chevy tooling. This doesn't just off the bat, look like any of the other uh, Chevy tools, because most of the other Chevy tools, uh, you know, as far as the small block Chevys go, don't have piston uh, ring holes. I mean, piston holes. Obviously, piston rings would go on top of your blah, 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 real car parts, but you know what I mean. 
obviously everything on here at the same is top dead center at the same time. It's an amazing feat of automotive engineering, but uh, these uh, piston holes do not exist on any of the other small block Chevys I can think of. That's an AMT thing from the 1990s. Not complaining because, uh, from what I understand. Uh, part of the AMT crew from the 1990s was also instrumental in designing this kit. It doesn't necessarily have a very big AMT feel to it, but that's just something that they did, and it's sort of a carryover. Uh, you've got your... It, over here is your... Uh, is your big blurry part, right? now. there you go. There's your intake manifold for your three two-barrels. You've got your cylinder heads, which have some uh, rocker detail in them, too. All those are amazingly on plane at the same time as well. Uh, your starter and your uh, small uh, accessory belt that would power your, I uh, believe technically it's a generator, but it's sort of an alternator. A alternator in a, what do they call it, a, Del a Delcaron, I believe is the name. Uh, it's an alternator that looks like a generator for the, you know, the look of the classic, so to speak. Your... Uh, Distributor cap. Here's your intake, your uh, intake panel, your valley panel for the uh, blower. You have two carbs here, which I do not believe are actually used, unless they're used on. Are they used? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the top of the blower. Obviously, the two carbs on the top of the blower. I'm sorry. I thought it was a different part there for a second. And then here's your uh, supercharger belt right there. And this was all that was in this bag, and we're gonna throw it back in this bag so that it doesn't wander off. And then everything else, other than the body, is going to be all chrome parts. Much mini chrome here. Ooh, oh, that's shiny. That's going to do all sorts of stuff on the camera. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Here's your straight pipes. Your your uh, your straight pipes. Your I think she's juggling drumsticks. Uh, some finned valve covers, uh, a finned oil uh, pan, uh, your Delcron uh, style alternator slash generator, uh, your carbs and your uh, valve and your air cleaners rather for the triple twos. Uh, your uh, blower is in four pieces. You have you know your main sort of oh jeez. Wow, you can't see that at all. <laughs> you, oh, I'm going to talk to myself while I point this off into the space. you got your uh, main part of your blower body here, and then your front and back are separate pieces. That eliminates uh, the uh, seams that would be there in a one part. And then you do have a one-part uh, blower itself that is hollow. You can, uh, you, know, go pretty, you can go pretty far in there. Eh, that's what she said. I apologize. Uh, this is going to have a seam around it, of course, that you're going to have to deal with if you want to leave a chrome. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a prototypical, prototypical one you can find that is, you know, has a seam around it like that. I'm not really sure. I'm not, uh, I haven't spent a whole lot of time around blown small block Chevys to know. Because sometimes, you know, you see people want to sand off the molding lines around a steering wheel when the actual car has a mold line on the steering wheel. Uh, and this, of course, would be your front cover here that has the bracket for the uh, alternator. And that is all that is in that bag, and we're going to, I know, dun, 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 start playing the girl from Ipanema. That would be the elevator music in Blues Brothers, in case you're wondering, if you're not familiar with the song. But uh, I just want to put this away so that it doesn't get all scraped up, because it is, again, the only thing that's in this one little bag here. So there are some more pieces, and I see some bubble wrap in here, so that's going to be another little quality control. Kudo to Ravel to not have a bunch of stuff scraping on a bunch of other stuff. And let's open her up here. I managed to cut on and off the bag at the same time there. Alright, open up. Open says me. Alrighty, first thing in here, if I can get it out without scraping everything in it, is going to be your new set of wheels. These are going to be your uh, sort of Halibrand's Five spoke uh, with knockoffs. <laughs> Your Halibrand knockoffs with knockoffs. It's kind of hard to show you any kind of detail to them because they're just so shiny. I think these look a lot better in a flat <laughs> silver or something. <laughs> I think on the box, in the box art, yeah, they're they're matted. They somebody put some matte clear on these because wow, are they shiny? Still pretty nice uh, overall. And then you have your knockoffs for them here. 
It's just so hard to show you this stuff because it's just so shiny and it's making the camera go nuts. Well, let's see here. Let's got this piece here. I'm trying to get this stuff out all at once so I don't have to stop going back in and out of the bag here. All right, there we go. All right, so obviously this is your grill shell for the uh, 1930 grill shell. Yeah. And then up here will be your grill insert for your 32 Ford. Here's your windshield frame. Your uh, uh, gauge back, if you will. And then these are going to be your door handles. No actual, you know, texture or engraving to the instrument panel because your decals are going to do everything there. Uh, getting this off without killing it is going to be a feat of strength. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, it's sort of the nature of the beast. Um, careful, 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 because this is not particularly thin. I can bend it. <laughs> I can bend it with my finger. <laughs> I don't want to do any more pressure than that because I don't want to break it. Uh, but you've got, you know, three attachment points, and then you've got these two uh, kick pins that are in here as well to worry about. This parts tree right here, would be your uh, your uh, rear axle springs and your front radius rods. That <laughs> this is just chromed enough. Look at this, guys! Right across the middle here, there's not a bit of chrome plating on the top of this here, but there's chrome plating on the springs. And there's chrome plating on the radius arm. So <laughs> somehow this didn't get chrome plated, but everything else did. I'm not going to complain, but check that part in your kit if you have one, because uh, egads. And uh, these over here are going to be your exhaust tips. Uh, I'm trying to see which way they go. I guess they go this way. So they're hollow. So that's a nice touch there. Uh, or they're hollow-ish, I guess. Um, you know, this it would be, of course, your front axle. What was I calling it with springs? This is your front axle here. Uh, yeah, it looks good. It has, you know, your the it has the seam you'd expect it to have, and these radius arms also have the seam you expect it to have. And this is the first place I've seen, and I don't know how well it's going to show up to you guys, and especially on this one here on this end. There's a little flashiness to this, where you know it's not terribly bad, but I can see the seam without looking for it, if you know what I'm saying. It's probably one of the things that looks worse in person. Uh, you know, if you really, really want these to be chrome, uh, you're going to have to probably re-chrome them. Because, just because of the nature of round parts. Not a Ravel complaint. It's not a criticism of Ravel. All of the mold, you know, eh, is that kind of rough kind of nature to it. But be that as it may, um... It's just, it's a round part and it's chrome. Everybody who's built models from the start of time till now knows uh, about that. And then there is, last but not least, this sheet, which has bubble wrap on it. So that's a nice touch to keep things from clanging into things. Here would be your rear springs back here. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what this is, would be, technically speaking. I believe that's, what, your steering arm? Your tie rod. Yeah, close enough. Um, this up here would include your headlights. I don't think you use one of the... You, you have an option between two of these, and they're including the, the, the set from the 29 Ford in here as well. Uh, that's why there's four sets of... Or three sets of headlights, too. Uh, I'm thinking you're using... Uh, let me see here. 130, 131, and 140. One of these is not going to have numbers to it. 131... Oh, wait. 30. 31, 140. 140 is small headlight bucket so okay you're using the small one and then let's see 30 and 31 which one of these are the ones are we the ones we use 30 so you're using these two large ones here and these two you got a set of headlights for free basically those are the ones again from the 29 ford there's a license plate bracket here ironically the license plate has some sick marks in it uh your shocks are chromed your springs well they're chromed too why not uh, you got two different style steering wheels here. You've got a more uh, traditional style steering wheel and sort of a uh, you know a banjo uh, armed steering wheel, so to speak. Uh, again, both these look good. Uh, they probably look way better, not chromed. So some dechroming of various things is going to take place here. 
Um, she almost broke the tire on turning this thing around. Um, you've got tail lights. I think there's two different style tail lights here. You're going to use these style. I believe these styles are carryover from the 29. This would be a rear view mirror right here. And then these are, of course, your chrome trim rings and your hubcaps. I don't know if we're going to be able to get these hubcaps in focus with as shiny as they are. That's probably as good as it's going to get, guys. But some nice engraving there. These are carryover parts from the 29 as far as the, the these steel wheels. They were the ones that were in the original kit, the original 29. So if you have a 29, you've seen those before. And then that takes us down to the body. This is the only part that's left is the body. Come on, Ravel. We're having a good review here. We have one complaint about some chrome, and that's pretty much it. Don't disappoint us. We're in the home stretch. We're coming around. We're coming around home, and we don't have an ugly yet. So here's your body itself, and here's the roof. That's right. They're in two pieces. Now the reason this was done uh, was just the nature of the body. It would be technically and feasibly impossible with mold technology, and it's just the limitations of plastic uh, to get this uh, front area of the body here, this sort of, uh, oh, sunshade, for lack of a better term, because the real world is popping, is disappeared right out of my head right as I was about to say it. The sun visor, ha there it is, to get the sun visor in here would be technically impossible if this was all one piece. It would just not, there's just not a way to get the plastic to flow correctly. So on the, the uh, upper part of the roof here, if we could please get this to focus, yes? Maybe if I speak to it in French, it'll focus. Yeah, well, trust me, there's a hinge right here for the top of the door. Uh, going around here, um, there's a mold line that runs around the top of the edge of the window frame here. That's nothing new. That was pretty much the same mold line, and there's a mold line that goes down the side here, nothing extreme. A couple of swipes with some sandpaper will take care of that. Uh, you know, if you built the 32 Ford, any of the 32 Fords, you know there's a mold line around the back window there. Here's the actual body itself. Um, this might be the same body from the from the 29 Ford itself, although I don't believe these notches were in there, so it might be a new body entirely. I'd have to, again, get the 29 Ford out to look. This body is very well done in the sense that it's not warped. It's straight. Uh... I don't see any sink marks. I don't see really any mold lines here. There are some mold lines. I, well, and if you look hard enough, you always find something, right? <laughs> and that's not a critique of Ravel. That's just the way plastic models are. There is a mold line that comes sort of down the edge here and then comes back and runs the outside edge of this uh, character line and then comes down off the edge, comes down off the edge back here. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm sure there's probably, well, yeah, there's one right here on the cowl that runs along this area right here. But again, nothing out of the ordinary. Now, here's the all acid test. The guy who showed this online first before anybody else said that he just sat it in there and it fit. <sighs> if this doesn't fit, of course, it makes the whole bot, it makes the whole thing go all cattywampus. Whoops. It fits. I just have to hold it because i got to hold this thing sideways in order to uh, get the set. So let me see if I squ squish it around. It's not a real tight fit. He said he put his in and he could pick it up, which clearly is not the fa case because I can clearly slide these door uh, hinges, this door frame, like, you know, side to side out of place. That should be where it is and I can slide it backwards. But it fits. It's not uh, warped and maybe... You know, if anything, you'd take this... No, I wouldn't do anything with it, actually. So you just need to uh, make sure that when you're putting this together, uh, in a, once you have the prep and you're going to you know, glue the roof to the to the body, basically, that you uh, just make sure it lines up. Otherwise, uh, it does fit, you know. I, I, I don't want to tip it this way because it's going to fall off and there's going to be a gap here. Because <laughs> a gap will develop if you don't, you know, keep pressure on it. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. That works out well. Uh, a lot of people were scared, of course, instantaneously of multi-piece bodies. Uh, Ravel having a, a troubled history with multi-piece bodies, actually. Uh, you know, your, your uh, 
like 39 Ford Galaxy that has the folding top. That's a whole big mess. Several, several would be really cool uh, if they weren't 132nd scale, which isn't a scale big a thing. It's just that I like to see them at 124 scale or 125th scale. Several 132nd scale kits that, uh, you know, reveled in the past, the Cadillacs and whatnot, are multi-piece bodies. Uh, there's, what, a 60 Corvette that's a multi-piece body. I mean, it's a 59, but at any rate, I'm, you know, I'm okay with that. Uh, slide it back towards you guys, you know. <laughs> yeah, it comes off, but... <laughs> It's, I, I can't pick mine up by the roof. I'm sorry. That was the, that was the claim. The fit was snug enough that you could pick it up by the roof. But again, I, I it has four distinct, uh, pads as far as the location pins. Um, and it fits well, fits correct. Uh, I'm not going to cut the, the, the roof panel out to see if it fits because I don't know if whether or not we're really going to use that or not. I, I know I'll leave mine loose anyway to, uh, you know, so I can act, take this off here to show off the interior. And you have a couple of uh, last comments here, a couple of hinge marks, or hinge marks, a couple of hinges on the door there. And this is nice and smooth, and it's really well done. So let's, uh, final thoughts us. Okay, so that, guys, was the 1930 Model A Coupe 2-in-1 from Ravel. Look good. Um, yeah, well, the whole thing. I really am happy with this. I really want to open my 29, take a look at it, too. Um, which, of course, you know, me, large part, the same kit uh, in the sense of uh, the contents. The only thing about the 29 is that it has this... Uh, <laughs> they accidentally included this floor pan with the kit. You weren't supposed to get this, because this is, of course, the floor pan just for this 30 kit. But this one's, there are two floor pans in the 29. They accidentally included that one with it. Um, but otherwise, the parts content would be largely the same. Obviously, you, you don't get the, the new wheels and uh, some other pieces. But, you know, you could obviously see large parts of the chrome tree are carryover. And, uh, but you know what? Uh, it's just really good. It really is good. It's not going to make me go out and buy every 32 Ford kit that Revell makes. But I'm very happy with this purchase. It's an exceptionally well done kit for $20. Uh, you know, we often complain that Revell needs to spend some more money and charge some more. Um, there are a few things here and there that are very, very minor in the terms of, you know, very minor things. You know, and, and I don't know that you could actually fix any of them. Uh, they're just the nature of injection plastic, the, the seams on certain things. Um, I guess the only thing in a sense of charging more and and costing more is uh, on pieces like this where there's this you know weird flash on these parts i mean these these are brand new parts there shouldn't be any flash on this at all that's just some factory laziness and quality control right there because it's not on the parts so screw it but it just makes the kit look kind of hinky when you when this is the first thing you get to and it's like oh what is this all about but uh you know I really can't say anything bad about this kit. Really, it it you know my big concern when I heard that this was the, that the roof was a roof the roof the roof is not separate is not attached was whether or not it would fit and it does it doesn't fit as tightly as advertised by certain people but it's still it fits uh, you know <laughs> you're not going to leave it loose in your build you're going to glue it together. Um, the one thing that uh, seems kind of odd is the way that the uh, body of uh, the uh, a lot of constructs for the high boy as far as uh, putting the putting the door panels in the body itself rather than attaching them to the uh, floor pan. <laughs> it's very Heller-esque in the, in the way that that's uh, engineered. But assuming that it all works out, I mean, what can you? You're not going to sit there and complain about it, I suppose. Um, I just good, good, solid effort. Um, yeah. The bad. Um, the bad really does uh, come down to uh, a couple of complaints about a couple of things. This chrome tree, like I said, um, I would prefer not to have this these parts chromed in the first place. I know they could be chromed, and for a show rod style build, these would be chromed. 
but all I have to do now I've got to dechrome them anyway because of the the seams and yes these seams would exist because of the nature of plastic however these seams are flashy and these are brand new parts uh, I don't know that these parts are specific to the to this kit they may also be the same parts that are in the 29 however again this is the second run of a brand new tool and it's just that's just sloppy quality control at the factory in China how much can you blame the people in Illinois for it I guess you really can't uh, you know they're not in China they don't seem to have somebody who speaks Chinese uh, just based on the way some things seem to work um, could a lot of these problems be rectified or at least uh, modified or, or minimized I guess is the word I'm looking for if we reshored production in the United States I'm sure most of it probably could be. A lot of the problems could be, but then it gets into how much of your Ravel kit's going to cost, and we all know that the Ravel customer, the uh, stereotypical customer, the customer that Ravel goes after, the casual builder, um, doesn't gonna is, is not going to pay more. So until you can convince Ravel that their primary customer they need to be targeting is a serious adult modeler, then you're just sort of going to get these you know compromises. That being said, uh, you know, that's the worst thing. Alright guys, so that's it. There is no ugly. Ravel did a humding of a job here, and that proves that Ravel putting their minds to something, in this case, a pet project of the upper management for many years, can do wonders with a model kit. This is really a nice model kit. How it builds up, I don't know, because obviously I haven't built it yet. However, I've seen plenty of 29 Fords built, uh, and they don't seem to be causing a ruckus. The biggest ruckus uh, that were caused by the 29 Ford was the fact that it has two floor pans, and the instructions called out one of the floor pans for one of the builds when you use the same floor pan for both regardless. Uh, that caused a lot of people to try to put things together and not be able to fit things, and that caused a ruckus in the first like week or so of the kit being released until the information got around that you know you just don't use this one at all. Um, it's really just an A. It's, it, I, I'm not going to give an A plus grade. I'm not going to give a ten out of ten grade because it's not that kind. Of, it's not that good, but uh, it's certainly up there with anything that Ravel has done in the last ten years. Possibly anything that Ravel has done in the last twenty five years. Just an excellent kit, uh, all the way around. I'm sure that if you're really really into hot rods, you could find you know eight miles of discrepancies here. But as somebody who doesn't build hot rods specifically, I don't do rat rods like watching people do them the people that can do them well matt getter and other people um but i don't build that way my stuff is shiny uh which is not a knock on anybody who does weathering like i said i really appreciate people who can weather correctly and well uh there's a lot of people who don't and it just looks like crap but the people who do it well really respect those people because as far as i'm concerned it takes as much or more effort to weather correctly than it does to get a good shiny paint job um and like I said, I've seen a lot of people build the 29s without any problems. I expect this will go together as well, if not better. Uh, and yeah, guys, if we got to choose, I'd vote for this. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the uh, review. Hope it was informative to you, even if you're not joining our group build. Uh, if our group build. Wow, I just took it over. Sorry. <laughs> even if you're not joining the group build done by the Lazy Eyed Modeler, uh, I recommend this kit highly uh, just from looking at it. Maybe I'm just in a really good mood today. Yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys on the other side.